Hello everyone and welcome to our little corner of the world. We are Travis and Emily and we live in the mountains of Colorado. So this year, spring and the beginning of summer have been quite busy for us. We are both nature lovers and one of our passions is to forage wild edible food in the wilderness, but this year we decided to work on building raised pet gardens and growing some of our own vegetables for the first time. So it has been a season of sweating and hard work, but we are both very happy to share with you today the evolution of this new garden project, plus some of our little wandering adventures in the forest. We hope you enjoy it. transplant in the pot today. So we have a place in town where we always get mint every year and we recently discovered that they can be actually cloned just like you can grow roots from just a tiny branch so the last time we picked some mint in town we actually uh, decided to yeah, root them and now they are planted. Of course the mint I know is extremely invasive so we're gonna plant it in a bigger pot but we're not gonna mix it with the garden. So yeah, that's exciting. And we did the same. We found some lemon balm wild and we are like making roots right now. So that's very exciting. Instead of always relying on those because like, we don't buy mint. That's not something we use that often in our diet unless we have it from the wild. So now we will have it at home so we can make tea out of it. And of course, like use it as a spice and in salad and tabulis and uh, spring rolls. So. Yeah, we're looking forward for this little garden to grow. So today we are starting to work on a project that we have been talking about for months, if not years, and it's the building of raised bed gardens. We live on an old apaca ranch, so there are lots of old remnants from that era, and this big cattle trough that you see is one of them. So this year we're going to repurpose one of them to transform it into a garden where we're going to grow vegetable. Let's see what we're going to do with that. And we're very grateful because in the last past weeks we had the visit of a dear friend, so he has been helping on that project, which was very practical because this trough is very heavy and we had to roll it up hills. So let's see how this project is going to go. Thank you. 
So in some of the footage that we've just captured, what we're doing is uh, drilling holes in the bottom of this 10 foot wide, uh, probably two and a half feet deep galvanized steel uh, old water trough and we're going to convert it into a raised bed garden. Um, we'll have to do some some outfitting to it so that way uh, we have an ability to walk across it because it's so big uh, for our gardening uh, purposes and we'll continue to take footage of that as we go. Um, but it's really nice to, these have just been sitting here for the 18 years I've owned this property and uh, now we're making good use of them. I have a question for you. What are these? Why are they on the property to begin with? Yeah, these are old watering troughs. Uh, that was an operating llama uh, alpaca farm for 23 years. And so uh, obviously we haven't had those the time that we've lived here, but we still have seven individually fenced off pastures and some big water reservoirs, 1500 gallon reservoirs, as well as uh, a bunch of these water troughs. And so we're gonna start to convert some of this old material into usable gardens. Yeah, because it was just, as Trav said, just standing there doing nothing. So why not try to uh, repurpose them, right? So that's the goal. It's been on our mind for like the last two years. It's something that was a possibility. And then we made some research online and we actually find out that it's, it's a thing. But I never saw like a huge uh, container like this, but we just thought we have it. Let's just make our raised bed garden with it. It's extremely solid. They would typically be, uh, you know, these galvanized steel garden beds would be uh, like an oval that would maybe be three foot wide by two foot high mm -hmm. by however long. But uh, we have these and so I can outfit them with some wood and some cinder blocks in the middle and we'll create a walking path uh, and then have uh, kind of a hexagonal uh, pattern with wood that we can walk on across the top of the garden to be able to get to the middle of the garden areas. We're going to put a layer in the bottom of rocks and then weed barrier cloth on top of the rocks and then wood on top of that to make it a hugel culture um, and then that way it doesn't require a super lot of soil, a ton of soil as well. And what that hugel culture does is uh, absorbs all of the water through winter and spring um, and anytime it rains uh, that drains down into that wood and that absorbs it and eventually will compost and uh, and actually just create deeper soil um, but it also uh, we use old decaying wood which has a lot of uh, active living bacteria in it that's super healthy for the soil so uh, there would be a whole layering system rocks uh, weed barrier cloth uh, a, probably a good layer of wood and then some you know twigs. eight to ten inches of soil yeah some decaying wood there's some twigs some mulch compost mm -hmm. and then the, the soil and then the soil yeah yeah and Travis have been piercing holes because we want the water to be able to evacuate because you don't want stagnant water at the bottom of the container so yep creating drainage holes and and then with the layering system we're doing those drainage holes will also provide aeration to the bottom of the soil and uh um and drainage so it'll be multifaceted. yeah so I'm super grateful we have that on hand because otherwise we would have had to build something and yeah, and we might have finished it like at the middle of the summer, maybe a little late. So right now we have everything on hand and then we're going to fetch whatever other material we need in nature and that's it. The way we're building it and the way we're layering it, it should last forever and all we'll need to do over time is uh, re-amend it with some compost and some earthworm castings and, and possibly different uh, minerals or nutrients depending on what we're growing in here at the time or the season. Of course, we'll rotate crops and, you know, different vegetables eat different things and so you always want to rotate your uh, your crops to make sure that you're feeding everything uh, properly. Yeah. Good. 
going to put the rocks down, the weed barrier down, and then bigger uh, wood pieces. And then, I guess, smaller is what you're thinking of. Smaller wood stuff on top to kind of fill it. To pick morals. <laughs> That's a serious business here. <laughs> yeah, we found them the other day, but they were so tiny. So it's been now, uh, it's three days ago. So they should be now bigger and we will probably bring them home tonight. Some of our friends told us we were lacking morals, so we figured we better go find some. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> so tiny guys and there's a second one there and a third one here that we will pick what happened why did they get so tiny <laughs> in our magical mind we thought okay we're gonna leave them there and then they're gonna grow so much bigger but they just dried out <laughs> beginner mistake but no problem they're just tiny tiny little thing something else that we love that is edible and it's this tiny little catsy flower. there and there this is very good then soups when they are tiny like this but they're truly sting and it's also good for tea although we will wait because these they will grow like one to two feet tall so 
right now they're just at their primary stage so yeah we love that medicine Just right there. Uh, saw our first moose of the year. Success. Yes. I like it when the plane comes together.
this dried out very well. It's, it's been three days. I kind of forgot about it, and today I need the trays again for some wild garlic. And uh, there you go, it's so dry. And we reuse our bags because why not? It's very, it feels very good to make our own medicine. I mean, we could be buying nettles, nettle tea, because that's super amazing and rich for the body. But, yeah, finding them and drying them, all the steps are so enjoyable when you make your own medicine, so. Can you hear the goat? The neighbors go. Smells like garlic onion. <laughs> this is the mountains, it can shift in a split second. That's why I put a double tray on top. We don't know if it's, uh, we think it's garlic. We always thought it was some kind of onions, but we learned that there was some garlic in Colorado, wild garlic, and I think it's more like garlic, what we found. And there are spots where there are like thousands and thousands and thousands of them, and we make sure not to take the bulb. Every once in a while, there's maybe a bulb that come out every hundred pounds. <laughs> but right now we're gonna have them all dry for the winter so we can use them in all our recipes. So yeah, the wind just came in so quickly. And the man is picking screws. Hey. And our Google culture garden is coming along.
don't have any problem. It's just a little different. <laughs> Good work. Yay! <laughs> it's strong. And all of this is redwood, because uh -huh. it's remembered from the deck. Well, yeah. So it's actually antibacterial naturally. Like it? Oh, that's awesome. Hey! Yay! And then, and then I say we keep the soil level on. Oh, that's awesome, guys. I'm so happy. The following day we went down to town 3,000 feet lower because there are some wild parts there where we love to forage some wild edible food. And the thing is that because we live in higher altitude, we are three weeks behind in time in terms of temperature. So there are things that are growing there right now that are not growing at our elevation. So let's see what we're going to find. But normally we're looking for asparagus at this time of the year and some other thing that we might recognize and bring home. Let's see. What did you find there? These are miracuit shoots. They're like, you can cook them like asparagus. It's very yummy. And it's this time of the year because after that we don't eat them. So. Oh, most amazing thing we can find in nature. Asparagus. Wild asparagus, guys. <laughs> That's very exciting. find more asparagus? Yes, they're so small so we will probably let them grow and maybe leave some for other people but definitely you're gonna take one or two. So that's the result of our little foray today. Look at this guys! We'll come back again like probably later this week but super excited. Just stopped for a little snack. Which is a fresh spring cattail. Cattail shoot. Mm -hmm. Cattail shoot. You gotta peel off the outer layer because it gets a little fibrous. You could bite in it now. One leaf at a time. A little nope. fibrous. Oh. Sorry, you were right. Oh. There you go. Hmm. Let me get drop.